This current challenge is called Maximum Elements. And today we are going to work with a data structure called a stack. You can read more about stacks on c++.com. I'm just going to scroll through the member functions here. And the most common functions that you're likely to use are empty. So you want to verify if your stack is empty. Size, because you want to check the size of your stack. Top, because you want to access the element that you last inserted on the stack. Push, because you want to insert elements on the stack. So you push elements on top of each other or stacked on top of each other. And pop is to remove the top element. So whenever you add an element, you can use the push method, then you use pop to remove it. So when you use a stack, you can only access your elements from one direction. So you push them on the top and you access them from the top. You can't access them from the bottom because it's a last in first out structure. So that's what you see here, LIFO, meaning that whatever element was last inserted is the first element that is going to come out. Anyway, back to this challenge here, we are going to receive some queries and number of queries, and they come in three categories. So every category is going to contain eight digits when we receive our query. So if we receive one, it means we need to push the element X on the stack. If we receive the digits two without any number, it means we need to delete the last element that we inserted on the stack. And if we receive the digits three, it means that we need to print the maximum elements on the stack. So at any given point, we need to be able to tell what is the maximum elements on our stack. So the challenge here is that when you're using stack, you can only insert elements and extract them from one end. So what they want us to do is find some sort of mechanism to be able to return the maximum element from our stack without having to pop all the elements and finding that maximum elements. All right, so if I scroll here, this is their sample inputs. We need to handle the inputs and the outputs manually. So the first digits in our input is going to represent n, meaning that we have 10 queries. And then we have all the 10 queries following n. So this is 197, meaning that we need to push 97 on the stack. 2 here, meaning that we need to remove 97 from the stack. 120 means we need to add 20 on the stack, then remove it, then add 26, add 20 remove 20, print the maximum element, which is 26, add 91, and then print the maximum element, which is 91. So our output is going to look like this. We have to print the maximum element on their own lines. So one element on each line. I want to make this a bit clearer. So I have this um, notepad here. Let's say that we have a stack. I'm going to have two stacks for my approach. The first stack, I'm going to call it S. On the stack S, I'm going to perform every operation, meaning that I'm going to add every integer and also remove whatever I'm told to remove. And on the stack that I'm going to call max, I'm only going to push maximum elements. So let's say that the first instruction is to add 10, meaning that in our input is going to look something like this, one X with X being 10. But just to make this clearer, I want to type add. So I'm going to push the number 10 on my stack that I'm calling S. And I'm also going to push it to my max stack because at that point, the number 10 is the maximum element that we have because it's the only elements. And I also need to add that at that point, the maximum is 10 because it's the only value. Now let's say that the next instruction is to add 20. I'm going to push 20 on my stack S here. And I'm also going to push that on my max stack because it's a new maximum value. So I'm going to push it here. And at that point, my current maximum is going to be 20. Now, let's say the next instruction is to add five. I'm going to push five on my stack S. I'm not going to push it on my max stack because five is not a maximum element. It's not a maximum value. It's not greater than 20 and it's not even equal to 20. So I skip it and my current maximum is still 20. If the next element to add is nine, I'm going to add nine to my stack S because I'm performing everything from my instructions here on my stack S but I'm not adding it to my max stack because nine is not the maximum value. So my stack still has only two elements and my current maximum is still 20. If the next instruction is to pop the top elements or also remove is the same thing, then I'm going to remove nine from my stack S. My max stack is going to remain intact. If the next instruction is to add 100, I'm going to add 100 to my stack S and also 100 to my stack max because it's a new maximum. So that maximum is also going to reflect whenever I have to print it on the console. If the next instruction is to pop the top elements, then I'm going to remove 
100 from my stack S and I also need to remove it from my max stack because 100 is no longer available. So my maximum or my current maximum at that point is going to go back to 20. So you get the idea here. Whatever is at the top of my max stack is going to be my current maximum. And whatever number that I add, which is greater than or equal to the element at the top of my max stack is going to be pushed to my max stack as well as a new maximum. So if we received here 1000, 1000 would go here and it would also go here and reflect as my new maximum. So let's jump into the solution, the actual codes. When you begin this program, you're going to have some headers that you might not need. You can remove them if you want, or you can leave them. But for my approach, I'm including the stack, obviously, because this is a stack coding challenge. I'm also having SSStream because I want to use an iString stream object. And I also have this string because I want to handle my queries. So every query is going to be accepted as a string and then process to figure out if it's an instruction for addition, for removal, or for printing. So if you scroll down here, I'm having some integer variables. The first one is n. So for instance, n here, because I have 10 queries. I have a query type because I want to find out is it a query for addition, for removal, or for printing. I have my query value here in which I'm going to store numbers like um, 97, 20, or 26 like which number I have to push on my stack. I need to make a quick note uh, to mention that at first I was using a maximum int variable to make some comparison and figure out if I needed to update my new maximum, but I've just removed it. And in a moment, you will understand why we don't actually need it. All right, so here I have my query line and my query line is going to be for every line of query. And then I have my two stacks. So the first stack is stack S is going to be a stack of integers. And my second stack is going to be called max tracker. And it's also going to be a stack of integers. So you can declare them on a single line separated by a comma, just like I've done. Now we need to get user inputs for the value of n. And then I have C in ignore to ignore the new line character. And I have this for loop right here. So I want to run through all my queries. And for every query, I want to get the full line. So in this case, I want to get 1 and 97. If I use C in just like that, I'm only going to get the first word. So here I want to get a full line. So I'm using get line, C in, and whatever value that I have at every line is going to be the value that I'm storing in my query line variable. So remember here that query line is a string. So I can store a full line of text inside this query line variable. So now that I have my query as a full line, I need to process it. I know that it can contain either one or two integers. So what I want to do here is create an I string stream object or an input string stream object. And I want to pass my query line to the constructor. So then on this line here, I'm going to store the first value from my query line into my query type. And query type is an int here. So that's the type. Is it one, two, or three? Meaning is it addition, removal, or printing? And my second value is going to go inside my query value variable. So this is the second value here, like 97, 20, or 26, or in other words, you can also refer to that second value as the element X here. Next, I need to find out which operation I need to perform. So I'm using this switch statement here, and I'm passing it my query type. So a switch statement is used for control flow in programming, and it's a replacement in many cases for if else statements. So here I'm saying if the value of my query type is one, then I want to push that query value on my S stack. That is what we're doing here. When I was saying add 1000 and I was pushing it on my S stack, this is what is happening right here. But I need to find out if I need to add it to my max stack as well. So my max tracker here is my max stack. And I want to push that value to my max stack. If my max stack is empty, meaning we only have a single element, which is automatically the current maximum, or if the query value is greater than or equal to the current maximum value inside my max tracker. So after I'm done inserting that, if I need to insert it, then I can have break because I don't want to keep checking the rest here, the rest of the conditions. So this is going to keep going as we process our queries. And if the query type is two, meaning that we need to remove or pop the top element, then we're going to verify do we need to remove that value from our max tracker stack? So what I'm checking here is if the value that I need to remove from my S stack is the same as what is at the top 
of my max tracker, then I need to remove it from my max tracker because that value is no longer going to be available. So let's say here, right now we have 1000 that I've just added to my S stack and my max stack. If the next instruction is to remove, then I need to remove it from my S stack. But now 1000 is no longer available as a maximum. So I need to remove it from my max stack so that my new maximum gets updated to whatever is at the top of my max stack here. And of course, I need to remove it from my S stack as well. And then I break. Otherwise, if the value is three, so that's the else condition that I'm having here as the default condition, then I simply need to print whatever is at the top of my max tracker stack as the current maximum value. So like I explained, whatever is at the top of my max stack or my max tracker is going to be the current maximum. So that's the same logic that you see here. So that's it. When we are done, this return zero is only used for this main function here. So we can go ahead, run this code. We've passed the sample test case. So I'm just going to submit this code. And we have, I believe, something like 20, 28 test cases. And we've passed all of them. So that's it, guys. If you like my solution for this stack coding challenge, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Turn on your notifications and I'll catch you next time.